Hi Prince of Peace families, it's Pastor John Morris and I welcome you once again to our family video for this month. In this month, since we're in the season of Lent, we're going to talk this month about sacrifice and the giving up of ourselves for one another. And there's probably no greater symbol for that than the cross. So you can see all of these crosses that people donated from our congregation that remind us about the sacrifice of Christ and the way we can be a sacrifice to others. Welcome to our family video. Hi everyone, for Lent we're gonna sing a song called Heal Us Lord and Renew Our Lives and your part goes like this. Heal us Lord and renew our lives. Go. Heal us Lord and renew so I'm gonna sing I'm gonna start by singing that you can repeat it and then I'm gonna sing a partition which is part of a verse and then you just keep singing heal us Lord and renew our lives again and again and again until we all kind of sing it once together at the very end heal us Lord and renew our lives John, and so I just wanted to come and talk to him about last week's class, and I thought I would just come and sit in the sanctuary for a little while. Oh, I know. I've missed being in here. Me too. I've missed worshiping with everyone in person. I've missed the choir and our uh, communion and just our church family. Me too. It's been a year. Oh whole year. I, I mean, you used to sit with us in the pew. Like, you're our church family. No. It's just been a huge sacrifice this whole year. Not just not being able to come to confirmation or Sunday school or not being able to come to church, but not being able to be in school like we usually are and not being able to go out to eat with our friends and our family and hugging our grandparents and our aunts and our uncles. It's just, it's been a huge sacrifice. But you know, I look around and we're in the season of Lent and it makes, it, it makes me remember and it reminds me as much as I feel like we've sacrificed, it is nothing compared to what Jesus has sacrificed and what God sacrificed. For us. I would love to hear it from Jesus. Funny you should ask about that. I have a Bible. Would you like to read it with me? I would. I did bring mine. Oh, awesome. So we're going to go in the book of John, chapter 12. 
And Jesus is going to be talking to a group of people about exactly what we're talking about. All right. A crowd of people from Greece gathered with Jesus' disciples. The Greeks hadn't heard Jesus teach before and wanted to hear his message. Have you ever tried to grow a plant? Jesus asked. Before a plant can grow, you have to bury a seed. The seed dies. Then it comes to life as a plant. And it's a plant that can bear fruit, like grapes or grain. So kind of like how it's springtime right now, and the snow is finally melted, and I see people out trying to plant in their gardens. Yes, and actually, funny you should mention that, the snow is melted around my house, and I actually have plants starting to peek through, like crocuses, and daffodils, and tulips, and hyacinths like a seed that grows and brings us something beautiful to look at or maybe food to eat. Same kind of idea. Let's see what else Jesus has to say. Oh, he says, my life is like a seed, Jesus continues. Like the seed, I will die, but then I will come alive again. The Greeks wondered at these words. Jesus was going to die and come back to life? How was that possible? They had never heard someone teach like Jesus. Suddenly, God's voice rang out like crashing thunder. Listen to my son. The crowd jumped in surprise. God is talking to you, Jesus said. I will die and come back to life. When I'm gone, people will realize who I am. They will think of others first. They will choose to give up things so they can serve me, like the seed that becomes a plant. With that, they will bear fruit that feeds the world. Well, the Greeks were amazed by this. They wanted to learn more. Oh, how do we serve you, Jesus, they asked. He told them, whoever wants to serve me must follow me. Listen to my words. Serve others, love others. Then you will want to serve more and love more. That's how you can serve and follow me. So Jesus is telling us exactly what we have to do to follow him. Yes, like serving. Oh, do you remember when we, before the whole COVID thing, would come to church and we saw people helping serve at the church? Like, I know um, I've served as an usher or I've read. And we've served communion together. Yeah, we served communion together. Um, oh, the, the choir serves. They give beautiful music to us. So we can serve here at church. I think we could probably serve out in the community too. Definitely. I remember talking about this in, in some of the family ministry videos that were at the beginning of our season. We, oh, I know how we can serve. We can bring food to the food bin that's outside the front doors and that gets given to the people that need it at the food pantry. We can still donate to the food we pantry? We can still donate oh, every fine. single day to the food pantry. So that's one way we can serve right now, even though we're not in person here in church. Um, I have, oh, you know what we've been doing the last couple of weeks? We've been giving a family challenge. Should we give one this time too? Yeah, do we have a good one? We do. We have a really good one. Okay, oh. <laughs> Funny. Guess what the title is? Doing what's hard. Because sacrifice is hard. Sometimes serving is hard. So this is what I'm challenging the families. We are challenging the families to do. Sometimes we do hard things in life that we don't like doing. We've talked about this in Sunday school. A lot of times it's getting along with our brothers and sisters or cleaning our room has come up a lot. But I'm challenging, you are challenging, we are challenging the families to do something that they 
don't really like doing. Maybe it's taking out the trash. Maybe it's making your bed every day. I don't like doing That's that. That's hard. It is hard. <gasps> Maybe it's washing the dishes, loading the dishwasher. It might be taking care of our pets at home. That's not always a fun job. I'm thinking I'm going to make a promise to my family. You could make a promise to your family, and the families could make a promise to each other to try to do something that's hard for them and do it all week long. And I think while they do it, they should remember Jesus' sacrifice. That's beautiful. Because God gave up his only son for us. Jesus died on the cross for us. That's a huge sacrifice. I'm thinking I can probably clean up after the animals at home and make my bed. Me too. Oh, hey, I heard you have a new house. I do. I have some seeds for you to plant. Thank you. These are going to look great. Happy new home. Thank you. Hi, Lisa Science Sticker here, Science Lady at Prince of Peace. I'm excited to share with you some fun science connections that remind me of today's Bible story. So there's a lot to think about in the Bible story today. Jesus tells his disciples and the crowd that had gathered around him that he's going to die. But then he will come alive again. He told the disciples what was going to happen ahead of time. And after he told them this, God's voice rang out like crashing thunder. And he said, listen to my son. And Jesus tells them and us through the Bible that we need to think of others first, to love others, to serve others, to follow him, and maybe sometimes give some things up in order to follow him. So listening to and following Jesus are both important in this Bible story. What are some ways that you can listen to and follow Jesus? So one of the things that reminded me of science is when God's voice rang out like thunder and he told everybody to listen to Jesus, his son. It must have been really loud. So of course in science, whenever we hear the word thunder, we also probably think about lightning. We know when we see lightning that thunder is going to follow. So today we're going to do a little activity with thunderstorms. So if you try this experiment at home, it's very important to ask a parent for help um, before you do anything and let them know you're, you'd like to do it. Um, so looking at the materials I have in front of me here, I've got some blue ice cubes. I put just a couple drops of blue food coloring in an ice cube tray and froze those overnight. And I'm going to make some red, using red food coloring, red water over here, and this is warmer. And so what these things represent is this is kind of the air when it's nice and calm outside, and water behaves a lot like air does. This is going to be like our cold air, and this is our warm air. And when a thunderstorm happens, cold air and warm air interact with each other. So before I put the cold air or cold ice cubes in one side and the warm air, the red, and the other, talk about for just a second what you think is going to happen in the experiment here today. So did anybody mention maybe it might turn purple? Red and blue together makes purple. Maybe you said blue will be on one side of the container and red on the other. Well, let's see what happens. So, and this, by the way, does make your fingers a little blue. So I'm gonna slowly and carefully add the blue ice into the water. And this does take a little bit of time. So there we've got the blue. Some of the blue starting to move a little bit. And now on this side, 
I'm going to carefully and slowly pour the red. And what we're looking for here is when the red and the blue meet. So I'm going to come down and look behind. And slowly but surely, what is happening is the blue is starting to push that, which is the coal, is starting to push the red up. The blue is sinking. And the air, when the air is cold, it sinks. And it pushes the warmer air up. And that's what starts making those big, those big thunder clouds that you see in the sky. And a lot of action actually happens in that thunder cloud. Maybe an action that you're thinking about is lightning. So when lightning happens, it heats up the air so fast and it gets so hot that the air kind of spreads out or expands really fast. And then it shrinks back down. It gets cool again really fast. And that pushes the air around it. And when it does that, that makes sound waves that reach our ears and we call it thunder. It makes that big boom. So when you're safe inside your house, maybe looking out the window, you notice that first you usually see the lightning and then you hear the thunder. The thunder follows. And this is because light travels fast, faster than sound. So you see the lightning first and then the thunder reaches your ear, the sound. So sound always follows light. So when I heard this Bible story, I thought of another verse in the Bible. Um, Jesus was speaking again to a group of people and he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So thunder always follows lightning and we can always follow Jesus and listen to Jesus. Remember, we can follow him by thinking of others first, serving others, loving others, and sometimes maybe giving something up in order to follow him. To close today, I'd like to say one quick prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time to learn about Jesus and about how to follow him. Help us to remember to listen to him and to serve and love others. Amen. I want you to tell me what you think sacrifice is. Anybody? What is sacrifice? Go ahead. You can unmute and just tell me. What is sacrifice? Like giving away something you really love. Okay. Um, like destroying something you love or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, is, it, is it like giving some, something up for your life? Okay. Do you feel like we have made sacrifices, whether yes. we've wanted to or not? Yes? Have we sacrificed not being at school as much as we want to be? Yes. Yes. Have we sacrificed um, spending time with our grandmas and our grandpas? Yes. Yes. Have we sacrificed um, not getting to hang out with our friends as much as we would really like to? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, what are some other sacrifices that we have done for others? Like Jesus sacrificed himself for us. Now I know our sacrifices don't seem like they're as big as Jesus's life, right? But what are some things that we sacrifice for others? Any thoughts? I know as a mom, I sacrifice some of my time to make sure Marin can get to her three ballet classes during the week. I'm driving all over the place. That's a lot. Yeah, it is a lot. Okay. What are some sacrifices that you have done for somebody else? Mm, let's see. Maybe on a playground, there's a game that um, your friend really wants to play and you don't really want to play, play it. Would you sacrifice some of your time to make your friend happy? Yeah. What other sacrifices? happened yesterday oh i saw my i saw my brother outside playing basketball by himself 
and he looked really bored, so I just went out and played with him. Oh, that's awesome. Has anybody else ever done anything like that? Sacrificed some of your time or something that you've really wanted to do for somebody else? Yeah? Any other connections? Usually with a brother or a sister, probably. Um, so I would, like, sacrifice some time only if, like, it's a good idea. Okay. Give me an example. Like, um, I have, I have a connection, but it's with my mom when she had to sacrifice. Oh, okay, so, that's fine. Um, so one time my cat got sick and we all had, and we all were going zip lining on that day, on that day. And, um, my mom had to stay back with the, with my cat to keep, to keep her safe. So she doesn't bump into anything cause she's sick. And, um, so we, so mom, so my mom had to stay behind, but my cat is okay now. Oh, that's great. But yeah, you're exactly right. That's a great connection. Um, yeah, that happened months ago though. No, but that's that's still a sacrifice um, that your mom had to make that she probably wasn't all that excited about having to do, but it was the she knew it was the right thing to do, right? I would definitely choose a cat over zip lining. <laughs> I'm glad you've joined me again here in the sanctuary for prayer. And I want to remind all of you that when we pray, I want you to think of it as a large V that we think of all the needs of the world and then more of our area and finally down to each individual person. So today we're gonna to be praying about sacrifice and remembering all the sacrifice of the world down to the individual sacrifices we make. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks, first of all, for the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, who gave himself up on a cross so that we might have life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks for the sake sacrifice of those around the world and of our nation who are reaching out to the many people in need through this pandemic. Bless them in their serving. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for those in our church who are sacrificing on behalf of others to deliver meals, to bring diapers and layettes to young women in need, to bring things to homeless shelters for people who don't have all the things that we have. Help all those who sacrifice what they have to help others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now, oh Lord, we also ask that you help each of us to live a life of sacrifice, that sometimes we can set ourselves aside to help someone else. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now we offer all these prayers in the name of the one who taught us when we pray to say together, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you this day and forever. Amen. Hi, everyone. We're going to sing a hymn called, I've Decided to Follow Jesus. And you just keep repeating, I've decided to follow Jesus. And at the end, no turning back, no turning back. And this is how it goes. The second verse, the tune is the same, but we're going to add the words, the world behind me, the cross before me. No turning back, no turning back at the end. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. No turning back. 
two together. I've decided to follow Jesus, and then we're going to do the world behind me, the cross before me, and then we'll go back and do the beginning part again. So it begins and ends with, I've decided to follow Jesus. Thank you. 